Well, good morning to you and uh, welcome to our Sunday worship. I hope that you are relaxed and uh, that you have a nice cup of coffee in your hand. Uh, and who knows, maybe you're still in bed. Well, whatever, enjoy the service. Let's begin our time together by praying this prayer of invocation in which we ask God to direct our hearts and our minds to Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty God, as you have sent Jesus to be for us light and truth, send now your Spirit upon us to grant us grace and strength to follow in his footsteps this day. Amen. And now we're going to sing a song which is entitled, What a Beautiful Name. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name. Shine. 
And now let us pray. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. All things have their beginning in you. All things are sustained by your presence. And you are the goal towards whom all the universe moves. But universal Christ, you are at the same time our Saviour, our friend, the one in whom we find rest when we are burdened, the one in whom we find hope when we are in despair. You bring us healing when we are sick, and you immerse us in mercy when we fall into sin. It may be that we are easily drawn away from you, and so we confess our need of you to draw us back to yourself. We confess our dependence upon you to renew within us a vision of who and what you are. And we confess our dependence upon you to create within us hearts that seek your presence and who desire above all else to love you and follow you. And so we offer this our prayer in your name and for your sake. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew from chapter 16 and from verse 13 to verse 20. And as you will hear from the reading, Jesus goes to the area near Caesarea Philippi. And uh, it's at uh, the uh, source of the Jordan River, near a sacred cave. And this is what this very area looks like today in the uh, backdrop picture behind me. Let us read the scriptures. Jesus went to the territory near the town of Caesarea Philippi, where he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? Some say John the Baptist, they answered. Others say Elijah, while others say Jeremiah or some other prophet. What about you? He asked them, Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Good for you, Simon, son of John, answered Jesus. For this truth did not come to you from a human being but it was given to you directly by my Father in heaven. And so I tell you, Peter, you are a rock. And on this rock foundation, I will build my church. And not even death will ever be able to overcome it. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What you prohibit on earth, will be prohibited in heaven, and what you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. And then Jesus ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. My youngest son is a professional musician and last year he wrote a song uh, entitled Real Name. It's a song about his granny, my mother. And in the song while he talks about his relationship with his grandmother in terms of the uh, this lady who came to visit and who gave him money for his birthday and who told all kinds of stories. 
in the song he laments that he didn't really get to know her as he wanted to. The chorus of the song is quite poignant. And the chorus goes like this. What's your real name? What do your dreams look like? Did you fall in love more than one time? I don't know you like I want to. Now today's Bible passage calls us to reflect on our knowledge of Jesus. Calls us to reflect on whether we know him like we want to know him. And the call arises out of his relationship with his disciples. For two and a half years, these men had followed him. They had uh, lived with him. They had shared his life. They had listened to his teachings. They had seen his miracles. One could say they knew him better than anyone else. And yet he asks them this question. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? First of all, let us talk about the context of the question. We read in the passage that Jesus and his disciples go to the area near Caesarea Philippi. This was uh, near the source of the Jordan River, as I mentioned earlier. And it was also a place where there were shrines to uh, the, the Canaan, Canaanite god Baal, the Greek god Pan, who was the god of the earth. In the vicinity of these shrines, a temple had been, bought, had been built to honor Caesar. So it was a religious center. But the city itself was established on a very important trade route between the coast and the Syrian capital, Damascus. A little later on, uh, Caesarea Philippi became a garrison for a significant number of Roman soldiers. Now I like to imagine Jesus and his disciples walking around the area and as they go come across the different features, uh, Jesus pointing them out and repeatedly saying to his disciples, who do the people say I am? And they say to him, well, some say you are John, others Elijah, others Jeremiah or some other prophet. The people said, yes, that he was the one that was going to prepare the way for the Messiah, for the coming of the kingdom. And Jesus says to them, but who do you say I am? And the disciples knew Jesus. They had shared his life. Yes, but who do you say I am? And the question Jesus asks is a question about who will they follow? Will they follow the false gods of mythology who offer so much but deliver nothing? Will they follow the false god of political and military power? Will they follow the false god of material prosperity? Or will they follow the god who is the source of all of life, the one who is the giver of living water? Now, we might not struggle with the same kind of gods, but we also live in a context where we are a subject to the lure of all manner of false gods. There is the false god of religion. In other words, a, a religion of rules and a religion of regulation. It may promise us a lot, but it delivers nothing. All that religion does is build up 
its own kingdom and its own structure. Then there is a false god of materialism. It's about stuff and having stuff. It's a false god that promises us that they, the more stuff we have, the happier we're going to be. Stuff that is sold and enriches those who make it. And then there is the false god of success. The false god who says the more you can achieve, the more fulfilled your life will be. And it's a false God that proclaims himself in all kinds of courses of self-realization and a religion of get your best life now. I know the lure of these false gods. And I know very well how many times I have succumbed to their charms. And it's in this context of our lives that Jesus asks of us the question, who do you say I am? Who are you going to choose to follow? Where will you seek for life? In those false gods? Or will you seek for life in me. Now let's talk about the answer to the question. Peter speaks for the disciples and uh, he says in answer to Jesus' question, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And firstly his answer means you are the anointed one, you are the chosen one of God. You are the one to whom all the words of the prophets point, the hope of the Jewish people. You are the one in whose life God's kingdom is made real. And you are the one through whose power and through whose spirit that kingdom will be established and completed. The answer is a commitment to participating with Jesus as he builds and establishes this kingdom. And it is a recognition that that is the purpose of our lives and the reason for our, our being. But in the second place, the answer is about recognizing that Jesus is the personal embodiment the human embodiment of a personal and a living God. Jesus is the embodiment of the God who is involved in our lives, who strengthens us and guides us and comforts us. That he is the one that draws us into a living and an intimate relationship with this God through whose love we are changed and transformed. And the answer is a commitment to seeking such a relationship and a communion with God and a recognition that that is the goal of our lives. And so as we talk about Jesus in this way, what goes on within you? What is stirring deep within you? Is this what you want? He asks of you the question, who do you say that I am? What will your answer to him be? Now, what was the source of Peter's answer? Where did his answer arise from? Jesus warmly commends Peter for what he said and says to him, This was revealed to you by my Father. In other words, this was not something that, Je that an answer that Peter achieved by means of his intellect. It 
was something that was given to him. He had lived with Jesus for two and a half years. He had seen him, he, the things that he did. He had listened again and again to his teaching. He had reflected with him afterwards about what he taught. And in that, Jesus creates within him a realization of who he is. We remember that when Jesus quieted the storm, Peter and the disciples uh, said, Who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? And so in short, as Peter reflects and thinks about Jesus' life and teaching, the Spirit creates within him a desire to know and follow this man. What he said about Jesus being the Christ and the Son of the Living God was given to him by the Spirit. Now, I can testify that this has been my experience as well. In the 44 years that I have been a Christian, there have been many times where I have slipped away and followed after false gods and have found my spirit deadening within me. But it has been when I have turned to the Gospels and the stories of Christ and the things that he said and what he taught, as I have reflected upon them, as I have tried to engage personally with them, that I have found myself being brought to life again, I have found myself being reconnected with Christ and have found myself being enthused again for his work. The Gospels are the record of how God revealed himself in the life and in the teaching of Jesus. And so when we read them, and when we think about the words that are there, when we open our hearts and personally allow those words to speak to us and to our lives, it is then that we find that real spiritual life is created within us, a desire to know this Christ and to follow him is built in us by the Spirit. And we answer him, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, not out of our heads but out of our hearts and out of our souls. And so in conclusion, as my son sang about his granny, I don't really know you like I want to. Do you sometimes feel like that about Jesus? Do you sometimes feel that there is a lot more to knowing and following him than what you experience. Let me point you to a reading of the Gospels and to a reading and a reflection on that which Jesus said. And do it not so much in a quest for information, but in a quest to encounter him and to feel the words that Jesus spoke addressing your soul and your heart. And the Holy Spirit will build within you a realization that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Not so much information in your head, but a conviction of your heart and a desire within your soul to know him and to follow him. Let us pray. O living Christ, create within us a knowledge of who you are 
and a desire to follow you. Help us to do the work that you give us to do in order to participate in the establishment of your rule of love. And we do pray that your rule of love would fill our land. Grant that we may be a land of justice. Grant that the peoples of this land will live in harmony and in respect of each other. Grant that the people of this land will have what they need in order to live dignified human lives. During this pandemic, we pray for those who are sick and ask that you heal them. We pray for those who are bereaved and ask that you comfort them. We pray for those who lead us and ask that you will guide them. We pray for those who serve us in hospitals in one way or another and pray that you protect them. And so we offer to you these our prayers in the name of Christ our Lord and for his sake. Amen. We close our service now on a note of celebration as we sing the hymn To God Be the Glory great things he has done. I wish you a wonderful week ahead and may you experience the fellowship, the grace and the love of the living Christ in your life this week. God bless.